Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Speak Now Pro Wrestling. It's your girl, Denise Salcedo, March 22nd, here to talk about WWE SmackDown. But I am not alone here today. Somebody needed some extra funds for their <laughs> WrestleMania trip and hit me up and was like, Denise, what shows can I hop on with you? And I was like, Reg, you're going to have to watch SmackDown. Wow, just on blast, off rip. We're starting the show with this type of discussion this type of entertainment this type of denise coming for me yes i am here it's friday night denise has been trying to book me for a friday night smackdown for a couple of weeks now and i'm always like denise i cannot and today i'm here and i didn't hate it denise you know what i noticed today about the the previous couple of weeks of smackdown is it flows a lot different when Dwayne's not there oh is that a good thing or a bad thing i i like that i think it's a good thing today because you, okay. we get, there was more wrestling, you know? There and I'm was trying to see more, more wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, there was more wrestling. And, like, even just in general, because you know how we've been having the qualifiers, the tag team qualifiers for the WrestleMania six-pack challenge? Like, right yeah. off the bat, I just want to say, like, I feel like the tag team matches on SmackDown wiped, besides one match on Raw, which we know was DIY and Creed Brothers, besides that match, they wiped all the of the other tag team qualifiers in the dust. Yeah, both of these tag matches are really good. So, yeah, just like Dwayne not controlling 40% of the episode helps people breathe in some other spaces. And I think it, it helped the show flow a lot better. Yeah, see, like, I know, like, the last couple of weeks, some people have been commenting on that, how The Rock has sort of taken up a lot of the real estate on the show. And I don't mind it. The only problem is, is that it's almost like you have to find this balance, right? Exactly. Of getting all of this stuff with The Rock, but also making sure that the stuff we do get with the other talent is is as entertaining. And right. instead, a lot of it has sort of felt like they just sort of had to speed through it because there was only a certain amount of time left on the show. Yeah, I noticed this specifically in the Naomi and EO match. Where I was like, okay, this match is getting time. Then got cut. Everybody got entrances. I'm like, this is how it's supposed to be. No one should be rushing through entrances. We shouldn't get half an entrance. Let's do the match, get to it, get time, and enjoy it. Exactly. Well, we're going to get into all of it here today. But before we get started, before we break everything down, just a friendly reminder, if you guys want to help support the show, get your questions, your comments, your statements uh, to get read here on the stream, you can send in a super chat. They help us out a whole freaking much. Uh, so let's get to it. We got uh, a few here. Uh, first and foremost, shout out to Sheldon Jackson for gifting five DWO memberships as always. Uh, Sheldon is the man. Ice T, he 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 kicks us off with our first super chat of the day saying, Was that Eddie Murphy's outfit from Delirious Seth was wearing it or a leftover costume from Michael Jackson beat it? I knew I'd seen that look somewhere. Who sported <laughs> that look? The red leather vest with the red leather plant pants? I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, no, Ice T, he he just described two times that you've seen it. Michael Jackson and Eddie Murphy famously have worn that outfit Seth was a little bit more baggier than those guys had but yeah it's wrong along those same lines yeah I was looking at it and I'm like I've seen that somewhere but where have I seen that Seth Rollins he's, you saw how he came in with the hoodie and it's like oh maybe he's subdued tonight he's not as wild he was like nah I'm getting the outfit off and he got his fit off yeah, he definitely did. Ice T, he, he, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. You're new, so I was going to say, uh, Reg, you're new to the SmackDown post show, and Ice T, he, he is a regular here. So I've gotten used to name. saying the name. It's a really good name. It's going to pop me every time I see it. I love it. Oh, man. All right, so let's get to it. Where do we want to start off? Do we want to start off with Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes? Yeah, let's talk about it. All right, let's get right into it. So, First and foremost, we are 15 days away from WrestleMania 40, man. I can't even believe how fast this is going. I can't even believe this month is almost over. I'm it's like, insane. where is the time flying? Well, anyways, heading into today's show, the biggest thing that was promoted since last week was going to be this face-to-face -face confrontation between Roman and Cody. And I was wondering what this was going to be like because, one, we haven't seen them really have a confrontation in at least, like, two weeks. And, two... The big ingredient that has been, like you said, taking up a whole lot was not going to be there, and that is The Rock. Right. So what was it going to look like, again, to just have Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes? Because we haven't seen Roman and Cody face-to-face -face alone in the ring since, since that SmackDown where Cody brought out The Rock, right? Like, that was the last time, I think. 
Yeah, that was the last time it was just them. No other bloodline, no The Rock, just like these two guys that are going to be in the main event of the show. That's what I was wondering, too, kind of coming into this. Like, why is it taking so long for it just to be these two guys? It's because Dwayne, like I said, just controlled so much in a good way and also kind of in a bad way because it's like you don't want to take away from the main event, the world title, the big match. But it's like Dwayne's so good, he has to. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's what I was thinking about during this. I was like, oh, I don't remember the last time I saw them just alone without The Rock there. So what we got here was this confrontation. And basically, the whole thing heading on, what was it, Monday, Mm -hmm. on Cody Rhodes' promo on Raw, Paul Heyman came out and he basically said that they were going to both be there, but that both of them had to come out without any friends like they couldn't come out with the bloodline and Cody Rhodes can bring Seth or anybody to come help him out. Right. Mm. And so you knew that one of these guys, most likely Roman Reigns was not going to follow those rules. So they show up here today and Roman Reigns is like telling Cody Rhodes that he's stupid. He's an idiot. And that he basically came out here and like, Oh, you're a fool for not bringing anybody with you. And he told him, you're number two. I am number one. You are not fit to be in this role. You are not fit to be in the top. I am the greatest number one of all. Sorry, you're the greatest number two of all time. Mm -hmm. And I am going to be number one forever. Cody told him that he was going to be that. He says, I'm not number two. I am the one basically saying that. There was talk about the shield and Roman Reigns was trying to get Cody Rhodes to, you know, not really trust Seth Rollins. And that has been a little bit of thing. There's been some trust issues, both for Cody and for Seth, but as well as for The Rock and Roman Reigns. And this all leads to a moment where Cody extends his hand. He wants to shake hands with Roman Reigns. And of course, Roman Reigns is not going to shake his hand. And Roman Reigns walks out of the ring. And I'm going, Reg, I'm thinking, what's next? Then... The bloodline comes out and they circle Cody Rhodes and Cody Rhodes is standing there and to everybody's surprise, out of nowhere, turns out he didn't come alone. He wasn't stupid. He wasn't an idiot. He brought out both Seth Rollins and Jay over from Raw and they had his back. So in the end, everybody's staring at everybody because he wasn't an idiot and he brought back up. What would you think of all this? they took a long time to get to the good part they uh, denise who's running time management on smackdown like the they we're getting to the last segment i was like there's 30 minutes left of this show why are, why is this segment going to take 30 minutes one whole segment is just roman reigns entrance and one whole segment is just cody rose entrance i'm like they could have had another match in this time <laughs> you know we're here or we're here or there what I glaringly noticed in this promo is that Dwayne is 20 million steps above everybody on this roster. Roman Reigns looked like he was out of his element in this promo. I don't know if he's lost his confidence. I don't know what's happened in the last couple of weeks, but he didn't look like the tribal chief. It could be a part of the story of like, he's tired. He's going through a lot. He's stressed. This is how Cody capitalizes on him. But like just presenting the promo, I was like, this isn't like the promos that Roman Reigns used to give up. But I'm thinking it's because I've been seeing The Rock just like come out there and he's like a huge personality. And Cody and Roman just look like two guys. And that's crazy. These are the main event. This is the world champion, the, a long reigning world champion. And it didn't feel like this match is going to be one of the biggest of all time. The Rock has just taken up so much that I'm like, yo, these guys need to step it up. It didn't feel like they were going as hard. The content that they were talking about, I thought was good. Him trying to trick him into like, hey, you know, I was in the shield. Like, I know if anybody knows Seth Rollins, I do trying to get Cody into this. And Cody being like, yeah, yeah, whatever, dude, I got my match. It's going down. It's going to happen. But yeah, the real meat and bones in this, I thought, were the end where Cody and or where Seth and Jay and the rest of the bloodline showed up. It was like, this is what we wanted this whole time. Why did you guys slow walk the dog to get us here? Good way to end (laughs) it. It just took a little bit of time to get us there. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think all of this was good. Now, you mentioned something that caught my attention where you said that you felt that Roman Reigns wasn't 
wasn't the Roman Reigns that we're used to. See, I didn't feel that way because when he came out there and he started like calling Cody Rhodes an idiot and telling mm. him how stupid he was, I was like, damn, I miss Roman Reigns <laughs> coming out here and being so mean to everybody. Like, that's what I was thinking about. But it is true, though, when it comes to The Rock, He's the rock, man. So he is going to look at a certain level compared to everybody else. And I feel like I've been noticing that for like the longest time. But I didn't feel like there was something missing from Roman Reigns in this particular moment, though. I did feel like Roman Reigns brought it. I did feel like he basically made some really great points, especially mm -hmm. that one that you mentioned about when he was talking about the Shields and how he shouldn't trust Seth Rollins because, you know, at one point they were friends and they trusted each other and look at how things turned out with them so i really liked what they did here but in terms of the ending though i think what i would because i liked i liked the way that it ended mm. i liked it the way there's two things i liked the way that it ended because it basically told us that cody rhodes was not an idiot and right. this whole entire time a lot of us have been talking about how cody rhodes needs to be more edgier how cody rhodes needs to have a backbone cody rhodes this cody rhodes that right he needs all of these things mm -hmm. and this was one of the uh rare times where cody rhodes came packed ready and prepared where he wasn't two steps behind roman reigns he was on a, an even playing field with roman reigns so i loved that aspect but the but the other thing that i was thinking about though was man they should have all came to blows at least i'm like we're if this was gonna lead to maybe they announce a match next week one week before wrestlemania or something like that i'm all in but i'm like they teasing us because i know the show's about to go off the air and they're not gonna get anything if they would all just started going to blows it would have been a little bit better but i do just kind of like the stare down of like this is where we're at in this angle. Now it does, there are a little bit of layers to this because I've seen a lot of people online. I hate this direction of they want Seth Rollins to turn on Cody and at WrestleMania. I'm like, that's like not, I, I don't want that ending at all. But like, there is that element of like, yeah, Seth did come to help him. But what if Roman's right? What if everyone's right about Seth and he does turn on Cody? And then Jay, it's like, he is still bloodline. They st There still could be something in there of him. It's like, well, these are my family. That's my brother. Like, if anything, I'm going to ride with them. We're going to see how it all plays out. It's a, there was layers to it. That's why I liked it. But if they would have came to blows, it probably would have been a little bit better. Yeah, because let's say they would have done this, right? Let's say they would have done it where the bloodline, you know how they came out and they circled they kind of circled cody around the ring but then they kind of backed up and went into the entrance what if they would have stayed there surrounding cody mm. and then behind roman reigns instead of coming from the crowd but behind roman reigns then we could have seen jay and seth come from behind so it became a situation where they were both surrounded by the other guys uh, people and then bam then they could have been like handling their own business Roman could have been handling freaking Seth and Jay and Cody could have been handling the blood and it would just been a mess and then just leave us all to wonder fade to black and go to the next thing <laughs> you know leave us all wondering what the hell happened you know yeah, no, but I mean, you know, those are things that could have, we wish could have happened, but I do think that they ended on a good note. What's your excitement level about for just the title match of Roman versus uh, Cody, uh, eliminating the tag match, like just the main event? What's your excitement level at, at this I point? I don't know if I have an excitement level. I have an anxiety level. <laughs> <laughs> I think the better question is, what is my anxiety yeah. at? Because, totally. okay, like we're sitting here and we've talked about this before. Is Cody Rhodes going to actually win this time at WrestleMania? And the last time that you and I spoke about this at early January, your opinion was that Cody Rhodes was not going to walk out as champion. Has that changed for you? Yes, it has, Denise. It's changed out of necessity, honestly. It's like... At this point, you guys have thrown everything in the world at Cody, the bus, the kitchen sink, a school, like everything, all the adversity he can go through, you've thrown it at him. You have to pay this off. You can't do this two times in a row is where I've landed. Like, I was making the joke. like, they're, been saying, Reg. they're trying to get to Hogan and Roman, but like, no, they can't, dude. They got to give Cody this win. The, where they at, the, how they had him look and – the Rock slapped him and how they've been little broing him. He's got to win, Denise. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that has been like where at my stance, where I've been. See, I almost had the opposite effect as you, though. You went from thinking Cody was not walking out as champion. And I went from Cody is walking out of champion to what if? 
there has been this seed of doubt planted in my head. What do you mean, what if, Denise? They, they, Denise. I, I'm just what, I'm scared. I have PTSD uh, from WrestleMania 39. I know, I know. And it's Roman. And I'm still like in the back of my brain, I'm like, WrestleMania 40. It's a big one. I can see Roman at the end of that show with those belts, fireworks and everything going on. And, and the, the rock in him. The I don't rock, know. That's why I told you. My anxiety yeah. levels are high. Denise, I don't think they can though. They've set these fans, the WWE universe, Philly, like it's all the elements are for Cody. It's going to be bad. But Reg, I thought they couldn't last year too. (sighs) Reg, they were going to have this man give up his WrestleMania match. Yeah. They had like, like that was their one, like, okay, we can do this. We could test it, but they can't do it twice. They've, they keep reiterating that he won the Royal Rumble twice. Like everything that he done to get here. If, again, you're like, just kidding. That's a bad look. I know. I know. But I I'm can't believe you scared. changed, Denise. You're like, you, it's I, not that. I, I it's just, now. it's, it's, I, I have doubt. I have yeah. doubt. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. he loves me. He loves me not. That's the kind of doubt I have right now. And this, this- And with this story and the bloodline and what they've been telling us for the last almost four years, like Roman can't lose. And why would he lose at WrestleMania? Does it feels like it's not going to happen, but they can't, Denise. They can't. They can't. I know they They can't. can't. My pick is still Cody Rhodes. (laughs) I'm still expecting Cody Rhodes to win, but there is still that seed of doubt in my mind. Don't do Cody like that. He don't deserve this. After (laughs) all these videos I see online of him kissing like Roman was saying, kissing babies and he's granting wishes and he's dancing with moms and stuff. I'm like, dude, this guy (laughs) is the face of the company. Give him that championship. I know. I know. All right. Well, we got a couple of super chats. Thank you so much to everybody who's uh, sent these in. They help out a whole lot. So let's get right to them. This one's from KW who says, another way we know Vince is gone is that no one made a poop joke after all of that number two talk. Oh, I thought it. I thought it. Did you think it, Reg? I did not think it. I'm glad that KW brought up this point because that's a great point. This thing would have just been trending right now, some diarrhea or poop joke or something dumb. I'm glad they kept it serious and they did not turn it. That is a sign right there. Yeah, I know yeah. you were thinking it though, Denise. No one's surprised. Yeah. Thanks, Reg. <laughs> I was thinking it. I was like, Haha, number one, number two. <laughs> no one's surprised. No one's surprised. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't saying it out loud, but I was thinking it. Nick Connick, thank you so much for gifting a DWO membership. You're awesome. Thank you so much for doing that, Nick. Uh, we got Tunde Ud who says Imperium ain't that ain't in that tournament. They beat New Day, but Austin and Grayson are in. Do y'all think they have a better plan for them at SummerSlam? I mean, sorry, at WrestleMania or at SummerSlam? Um, I would hope so. I think I said that last week somewhere where I feel like they've got to have something for both um uh, freaking Ludwig and what's his face? Um God, Fabian Eichner, uh, his Giovanni Vinci. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those those two guys are the guys that were kind of been on the grind for the whole year that deserve kind of like a moment to celebrate because there was a lot of Raws where they were carrying them with great tag matches and for them to not be represented at all, especially in this match that they should be represented in, is pretty weird and unfortunate. But I do ice- like Grayson and, and Austin Theory. We'll talk about it. Very Ooh, soon. that's interesting. <laughs> All right. Ice T. He, he says Cody dropping the Bullet Club reference was meh. Any that's back on sparks? All of the stuff that they were kind of saying, the content of it felt good, but it's like the execution of everything wasn't hitting that good. Will Chisholm says, I love how Cody Slick gave love to his Bullet Club history. Back to oh, back. so we got Hear two that? different opinions there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Will. We got Steven here who says, do we get Cody versus Rock before Rock versus Roman? Um, It depends on how WrestleMania closes out. If there is a situation where the Rock turns on Roman Reigns, then for sure Rock versus Roman first. Right? Um, because but here's know. the thing, though. I feel we do need to see Cody versus the Rock. Come on, they're out here making your mama jokes while the Rock is. I think they still might try to go with Rock and Roman next year at WrestleMania, and we could get Cody and Rock at, like, SummerSlam first. Okay. I think we could get the Cody and Rock match first, actually. Damn, so another year on The Rock and waiting? Uh, I, uh, does that? How does that sound? Does that? How does The Rock right now? <laughs> Hold on, The Rock. Let me see. The Which issue is, is Denise is like. So that means next, by next year, he'd be 52. The issue is, is we've already seen like these rumors of he has a movie or something. He's just going to keep getting more parts. So like you got to execute right now, like everything you can with The Rock, because he might not be back for something like this. I don't know. 
this is just too much of when is this going to happen? They should have just done it at WrestleMania 39. Done what? The Rock versus Roman. No, they should have let Cody win last year and did the Rock well, versus let's Roman. Say they, this let's year. say they didn't do Rock versus, I mean, let's say they didn't do Roman versus Cody. They should have just done the Rock versus the Rock versus Roman. And then this year we could have been watching the Rock, I'm sorry, Roman Reigns versus Cody. It would have made a lot of sense in LA. Yeah, Rock and Roman. Right, exactly. It's yeah. Hollywood. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know. I feel like so many of these things could have happened in in different orders. Right. But I, I do like what you said though about doing uh the possibility of The Rock and Cody at SummerSlam and then next year. <laughs> God, I don't even want to think about next year already. Come on yeah. now. We're now, rushing things. You saying it out loud. I'm like, I don't know. We're going to do this all over again next year. I, I don't know. I need some new off. players in this main event scene, Reg. Next I, year, I, I want to be man. talking about two totally different people in the, the WrestleMania main event Straight for the up. dudes. Me too. But it, it'll probably end up being just like, huh? I don't know. Saying it out loud, I'm like, Drew Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, that would be great at WrestleMania. Drew McIntyre might be somewhere else. Oh, dang. Why, <laughs> why are we thinking this far? Why are we thinking this far? Stop, stop. Let's We're here, like, WrestleMania 40. <laughs> we are not talking about anything past WrestleMania 40. Not even yeah. Raw after Mania. Nope. Exactly. Mm -hmm, it's out. Are you going? You're not going to Raw after Mania, are you? No, I'm coming back home. Yeah. Right, right, right. Ice T, he 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 says, waiting for Salcedo to crap over the LA Night. Yeah, segment. Denise, do you know he and AJ are going to put on a tear down in the house match at Mania? Look, I'll get to that. You know what? <laughs> this time I'm going to play. This time I, I think I'm going to surprise you with what I have to say. Steven says, no more talk, Denise. Do your hair, multi dye your hair multiple colors. Yep. We, we all saw your tweet, Denise. We all saw you trying to be damage control for real or what? Yeah, I, I want to. Yeah. I want to. I really do. I actually tried. I actually dyed my hair myself during COVID. I dyed it blue and I messed it up really bad. Uh, but my oh, whole you're life telling me wanted, about that, right? Yeah, There's my, a couple of episodes where you can see it. I'm going to go research that. Yes. My whole life I've wanted blue hair though. Wow. Sasha and I'm getting to that age where pretty soon it's going to be a midlife crisis if I get blue hair. Kira Hogan's the one that was mad at Sasha Banks for the blue hair. You better watch that blue hair. Then women's wrestlers are mad. Oh, I know, right? We're like, how dare Denise do this? <laughs> Lab Gloss gifted five DWL memberships. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. And the DWL appreciates that. Van Housen Van Life sends in a super chat saying Cody should win this year. But if he doesn't, Roman can outlast Hogan's record and Cody could win three rumbles in a row. Stop it. Uh -uh, no. Plus, also, that's Austin's thing. I want Austin to keep his record of that. Cody, yeah, no, I don't think he should win another Rumble. Like Denise said, next year we need some new players. We need some people we're not talking about right now. Yeah, some new faces, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Van Housen Van Life. We got Samuel Muscle here who says they're building Cody to be Rocky. Rocky lost in number one. He won in number two. Why do you all build? Why do all of that building to fall flat? Um, this has been made, this this comment has been made a few times. I've seen a lot of people point this out and point out oh, the similarity, Philly. especially yeah. when, especially yeah. when um when The Rock was talking about how Cody was basically being a crybaby and he was that one promo that he did a while back where he was talking about how this isn't how it works. And I was like, this makes no sense. What is he talking about? And then he made that whole reference to football teams. And I'm like, bro, he, it was that one week, that one week where he said that the 49ers weren't going to go cry and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, but they could win again next year, make it to the Super Bowl. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he promo? was saying stuff and we were like, no, nah, Rock, I don't, that doesn't really equate. He was trying to equate Cody's thing to the 49ers and was like, that's not the same. You right. Talking. It was just weird. But after, but it was after that, I think that was the last week where things, where this whole storyline was a little bit hairy, like it wasn't that good. But mm -hmm. it was the week after where they like, really started to straighten things out it was the week after because i remember that was the first week that um the rock finally did one of those social media promos where he tied right. together this whole entire story and since then it's gotten so much better but that was the last week where i was sitting here going what the hell are they doing with this whole feud yeah i think the rock was trying to do 
The Rock came in trying to do like a rock tribute at, but he was doing the wrong tribute to himself when he readjusted and figured out like, oh, if I just like go into the Hollywood rock thing, one thing he figured out is the fans want to be yelled at. They want to be this. They want the full rock treatment. When he got to that, then it really got to kick into high gear. And I think that the rest of the guys kind of surrounding that kind of took that energy. And that's why things have gotten better since then. Thank you so much, Samuel. We got Jess here who says Dirty Dom is too damn fine to be wearing that mask. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jess, you know, Jess got her types. It's all good. He's a charming fella. He's a yeah. charming fella. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Jess, I don't I don't know how else to follow up with that, but thank you so much for the super chat. <laughs> I have some a lot of thoughts on that when we get to that match. Oh, so. I thought you were going to talk about Dominic's looks and saying no, you had a lot of thoughts on that. Not a lot of thoughts on say. that. A lot of thoughts on the match. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to hear those thoughts. I want to hear the other thoughts, Reg. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> Jess, thank you so much for the super chat. All right, so since we're on it, we might as well talk about it right now. Let's talk about this Dominic Mysterio situation. All right, so... Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar. Um, This match, they kind of played off on a little bit of, uh, you know, it seemed like they wanted to tell us that Rey was a little bit rusty. Yeah. Because uh, that was kind of what they were trying to show. And at one point we had Santos Escobar like yell in his face saying that he's a pathetic excuse for an old man. And this basically led to Dominic Mysterio coming out in a Rey Mysterio mask, and nobody was shocked that it was Dominic. Everybody <laughs> knew that was Dominic Mysterio. He Definitely. comes out, he takes off the mask, he distracts Rey Mysterio. Uh, Santos gets him with the 619, hits the Phantom Driver, one, two, three, defeats Rey Mysterio due to the help of Dominic. Now, I'm sitting here and I'm going, oh, we're back to this? Do we did we need Dominic Mysterio? Is my question because I feel like we didn't need Dominic Mysterio in the storyline again. That's a son, but still, I was coming on to this show, Denise, to be like, Why did Dominic Mysterio come out to help Santos Escobar? Didn't they do Dominic and Ray last year? Are we gonna do them again at WrestleMania this year? Why isn't he in Judgment Day? Why is he wearing an LWO shirt? I have like so many questions when he came out as to why he was helping. Doesn't Santos have? Guys, he's got that his have, guys. He's got Umberto and Angel. Yeah, why weren't those guys who very talented, tremendous tag team? Why did those guys help him? Why did we do the Dom thing just for the heat? Now, mind you, first of all, the match was really good. I uh, I thought that them kind of playing off of that. Ray did like a he slipped on a thing, so they kind of played off that. It actually helped with the match and everything. Ray Junior. Still one of the best ever. Unbelievable that he's out there. Santos Escobar as a heel. Please keep him as a heel forever. That baby face shit is out the window. But yeah, the thing about Dominic Mysterio, Denise, is when he did the thing and he we knew it was Dominic and he pulled off the mask, I was like, if this guy was, if he was like just good in the ring, he'd be like one of the best wrestlers in like all of wrestling. Because like just the heat, when he pulls off the mask, the facials, just like he's so smug and you hate him and he, he's an awful heel. But then the bell rings and you're like, ah, all right, I don't. What is this shit? If he could just get it together in the ring, he'd be number one. He has like everything else though, like the heat. He knows how to be a heel. He knows all everything else, but the in ring thing is just so unfortunate. Yeah, and he's gotten better. Definitely, he's gotten Definitely. better because it was That's really. Insane. I think we forgot how rough it was in the beginning. Because in the beginning, it was rough. But it's like, dude, your dad is. Effing Ray Mysterio Jr., the greatest of all time. How is it? How? I just feel like <laughs> I don't think that you can. I, I, I just don't think that he had has what it takes to be like Ray Mysterio's son. You know what I mean? Like in the yeah, physical portion, I just totally. feel like it, it, it. Ray Mysterio is just too special, too ahead of his time that for him to try and even get close to that, it's a really hard <laughs> task. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to try to compare to your dad because, like I said, he is the best ever. But, like, uh, in the ballpark, Denise, like, even over there, like, are y'all training know. together? Like, help me, dad. Let's go outside. You'd be and like, do give some me flips. the answers. Like, you I'm know saying. the answers. <laughs> give me the answers. Dude, pass me the cheat sheet, dad. I need it right now. You got the answers. But I also think, like, because Rey Mysterio's style is so, you know, so it's not that easy to duplicate. I think, no. if, like, you, and you just either have it or you don't. 
But even like his, I don't think you can learn it. Dominic's three three amigos are like the worst of all time, and that's just three suplexes, you know. And the little the, the legs, it just doesn't. He doesn't do the legs. He can't get it together, Denise. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he can't get it together. <laughs> Your dad's uh, Eddie Guerrero. Your dad's Rey Mysterio, and your dad's also Eddie Guerrero. How can't you get it together, dude? <laughs> it was funny because a couple a couple weeks ago, my um, one of my uncles, who you know, it's a, he, he's no longer like a wrestling fan, but he remembers a lot of wrestlers, right? Because he used to watch back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was one of those things, and he was asking me about like all of these wrestlers and where they were at now, right? So he had like gone down this list. If he was basically asking me every wrestler he remembered, he would ask me like, what's up with them now? Oh, by the way, that was like, my answer was either dead, (laughs) canceled, dead, canceled, uh, all of that, right? But whatever. Mm. So he tells me, he's like, oh, and uh, he's, uh, how is Eddie Guerrero's son? (laughs) And I was like, Eddie Guerrero's son? I was like, no. And I didn't realize (laughs) that he probably never finished yep. watching the storyline. And in his mm-hmm. mind, um, Dominic, Dominic. Was, was Eddie Guerrero's son. Yeah, now that was a real thing. There's some people that really think that. Denise, they're like, no, that's Eddie Guerrero's son. He's here. He looks like him, got the same mullet. He looks way more like Eddie Guerrero than he does Rey Mysterio. So, like, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, I, I'm a little shocked that they went back to this. But, hey, I mean, it's going to get the heat regardless. But I hope they don't go back to that because I really like the way that they close things out at WrestleMania 39. Like, I don't want to undo what we saw there. What do you think that they do with these people, specifically like the LWO versus Santos and his crew? Do they get a WrestleMania spot or is it? Damn, I have a feeling they won't. I mean, their LWO is part of this uh, bracket, um, but I don't know. I have a feeling that they're not going to put them in the match. They're probably going to do one of those big Andre the Giant battle royals. And that I hate that for the guys. Man, I don't even think I watched those. I remember one time I got I showed up. When was it? Um. One of the WrestleManias I went to, I showed up late and I got there and it was over. And I was like, oh, shit, whoops, missed that. It doesn't mean anything and it doesn't matter. It's just like, let's put a bunch of people in a match together so they could be on WrestleMania. And it's like, ah, all right. Matt Logan says Friday Night Reg, AJ LA Knight, bro. Tyler Stevens sends in a super chat. Didn't write anything, but thank you so much, Tyler. Will Chisholm says, um, GM Nick banned LWO. Oh, they did. Uh, and LDF from ringside. Okay. Completely forgot about that. God that damn. makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, but still. Come on now. We don't need to go back to it. Tuna Ud says, do we still have Bianca and Naomi versus Damage Control, or we get Bianca versus Tiffany at WrestleMania? What happens to Jade when she debuts on SmackDown? And what is her role now? So let's get into that, because that's a big topic for today. So Jade Cargill, I think for the most part, we already knew was going to be a SmackDown superstar, because that's where they've primarily been showing her. But they still hadn't said anything. They waited very, very long to like make this decision. I, I don't really know what took so long. I mean, they just had to tell us what brand she was on right. and she had been making so many appearances. I think for, for now, like if you've been watching SmackDown, you know, it was a given that she was going to be on SmackDown, but they made the official announcement. Jade Cargill is a SmackDown superstar. She's going to be making her first appearance as an official SmackDown superstar next week. So that is, there's a kind of good sign in there. Cause possibly she shows up next week. And they give her a WrestleMania match. It's a few weeks before WrestleMania. That could potentially happen. I don't see it happening, but it could happen. I do like them finally saying something about uh, Jade because we've been talking about pretty much on all the podcasts that I'm on. Phil and I, they ask us questions all the time. What's up with Jade? What's going on with Jade? It's a constant conversation online of like, well, she's been here for this long. She's only had one match, essentially. Like, what's going on here? What are they going to do with her? So I'm happy she's finally showing up. And hopefully they just give her a match here. Yeah, like, because I was starting on. to notice, Reg, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but I was starting to notice that some people were starting to turn on Jade for, like, just the fact that she hadn't been appearing. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's shouldn't happen, but, like, that definitely happens in wrestling, like, People need to see you. If you're out of sight, out of mind, it'll really be like that. People will be like, well, maybe that person wasn't as good as I remember because I don't remember them. That's definitely a thing. But Jade is such a big, huge personality that as soon as she comes back, people will know. Remember what happened at at the Royal Rumble. It's like, damn, she's like different level than everybody. When she comes out on SmackDown next week, everything will change. 
Yeah, I I hope so. I really, really hope so. But right now, the SmackDown women's division is looking pretty damn great because you got Jade Cargill joining. We already have Tiffany Stratton, who's like skyrocketed. We didn't see her last week or this. Oh, wait, we did see her this week really quickly in the backstage segment. But um, we also have Bianca. We have Bailey. We have Damage Control. I mean, there's a lot happening for the women over on SmackDown, which I'm really excited about. Um, but anyways, in terms of what we might be seeing here, so let's talk about this match because we got EO Sky versus Naomi, and I loved this match. Yeah. I was so bummed out when Damage Control came out and that led to the finish Same. because I was having the best time watching EO and Naomi. Like I thought they finally let Naomi. Besides the Royal Rumble, I don't feel like we've been able to see Naomi, like what we've been seeing, like her on TNA. I feel like this was one of the first matches where we actually got to see her do her thing besides Royal Rumble and besides Elimination Chamber. So specifically Mm -hmm. speaking for SmackDown, she went out there and she had some great chemistry with EO Sky. The superplex off the top rope, I thought that was freaking great. Them in the center of the ring punching and kicking each other, that was really great too. The splits thing that Naomi did, I don't know. Has she done that before? I've never seen it before. It's like a splits bonsai drop almost essentially. I loved it. I'm like, it looks mm-hmm. like it hurts her too, but yeah. hey, whatever. <laughs> do what you need to do, girl. I loved this match and I was so upset when it ended. And I was upset that it ended with damage control, basically costing this match for Naomi because EO Sky Reg, I don't feel like they've done enough singles matches for no. EO Sky given that she is the champion. Yeah. I think she should have defeated Naomi cleanly in this match. Yeah, I think like, you know, the opportunity for them to do a clean win, this was it. That was the only unfortunate part about this match because this match was awesome. I think Naomi has been, hasn't been put in too, too many good positions. There's been a couple of weeks where her time has been cut or she's been in some unfortunate type of thing. So for her to just get a straight up match with the world champion, an amazing wrestler in EO Sky, I thought was awesome. This was uh, another Japanese style straight up Josie match on SmackDown. These two women were in the ring, slugging it out. Uh, Naomi was busting out some stuff we've never seen her do in a WWE ring before. All the stuff that she kind of learned in TNA, she brought it over here. Really, really, really great work, I thought, from from both women. This was uh, uh, hard-hitting, really quick, just kind of different than most matches that are presented on SmackDown. I'm glad that they gave it time, and all of it was really cool. Uh, the 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 run-in, I like that they still gave it a pin. It wasn't like they ran in and did the DQ finish. They still let EO get the win, but yeah, maybe they could have just gave it to her a straight-out clean win. Awesome, awesome match, though, and they just need to... This is the type of situations they need to put Naomi in because things have changed of what WWE fans known of her. She's a great worker. Now all you have to do is put her in the matches and that's going to change everything. She still has everything awesome that comes along with it, the gear and the entrance and the hair and everything. She's a complete package now. So you just got to put her in matches and put her in position to show these people that they should care about her. They have to trust her Reg. Exactly. And that's what it comes down to is trust. They have mm-hmm. to trust her and put her in these positions because yep. that's what TNA did with her. She exactly. went in there and she spoke to me about this. She said she was nervous to go out there and do these long matches because mm-hmm. that's not what she was used to. And what happens when you go out there and you're basically forced to not only have these long matches, but to also be in main event situations, yep. it forces you to go out there and get better. And mm-hmm. so now that she's got this newfound confidence in her because we've seen it and we've seen shades of it now on pay-per-views and on this match here today they have to trust her and put her in these spots because i think she showed um she showed specifically today that she can be in these spots in these matches with people with competitors like eo sky yeah definitely really great moment for her to kind of show i am back and it's time but eo's been amazing as world champion i want to see her in more singles matches too like the damage control stuff is awesome i love everything that they do like you said on twitter their group looks awesome oscar's still like the uh she's like the mom that had a couple kids and like she got back with her friends and they're going out i always think it's like oscar's like just coming back out like you know if you're seen that like a movie where there's like i used to be like this bad girl but i have kids now and then like you should come back out oscar's like the you jennifer come back lopez out made in manhattan where she goes it. from being the maid you've seen that movie right no and I she's reg you were nodding your head i was like wow reg has seen made in manhattan with jennifer lopez i have not 
<laughs> okay, well, in the movie, Jennifer Lopez is a maid and she dates this like senator and they give her like a whole makeover and she comes out and they play the song, I'm coming out, I want the world to know. Oscar would definitely come out to know. I'm coming out for sure. That is an Oscar song, 1000%. <laughs> she just always like dancing and so happy and like, I'm happy to be away from my kids. I'm out with my girls. We're having drinks tonight. Like. <laughs> It's great energy. But yeah, answering the question, Denise, what do you think they're going to do with these women at the show? Are they going to have a tag match? Or do you think, Phil and I have discussed this on Gravity. we think that Bianca's streak that she has going and the things that she's done in this past couple of WrestleManias is enough to warrant her a singles match? Oh, of course. That's what, like, I feel like Bianca her not being in a singles match is a disservice to her because she goes out there constantly. We've said this before. She's Miss WrestleMania. Yep. And she did that. And so she accomplished and earned that name in such a short period of time during a time where you still had Sasha Banks with the company, where you, you have Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair. And who's sitting here being called Miss WrestleMania? It's Bianca Belair. Nice. Um, so for me, I'm looking at this and I'm going like, how do we not know what Bianca's match is? It's a little bit up in the air because after this, we um, saw Damage Control attack Naomi and Bianca came out and had her back. And then people were chanting Bailey. Bailey did not come out. This was a basically karma for last week because Bianca did not come out to help out Bailey and the girls last week. Right. So I'm sitting here and I'm feeling like, Fuck, I don't know. I'm thinking they're going to do, because I think we need to have a match with Dakota, Kyrie, and Asuka, three on three. Okay. And the other three would be um, Naomi, Naomi, Bianca. Sorry, I'm forgetting everybody involved. <laughs> Naomi, Bianca, so many freaking people. And who am I missing? Naomi, Bianca, and Bailey. No, not Bailey. Well, no, you match. can't. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the other person? Jade? Jade. Jade. Okay, there you go. I knew I had but someone. But then Bianca like, won't be in a one-on-one -on -one match, though. She'll be in a six-man. And I also, know, but that's how the that's women's how the tag feeling, belts, though. though. The women's tag belts are just what it props again. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. All right, so then maybe they. What if like they? They're not going to have ten women's matches on the show. We didn't know. What that. if they do a situation where it's Naomi, ver Naomi, and a partner of her choice, possibly Bianca? No, Naomi and Jade against Damage Control. Okay, they can do that. Yeah, that's how I you get we were Jade. Gonna, I thought we were going to see Jade team up with Bianca. Mm. When? I don't know when, but I mean, maybe now. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can do, I guess. But yeah, they have to get all these women on the card. They especially have to get the rest of the Damage Control women on the card because they've been carrying the SmackDown, all the brands for a long time, you know? Yeah, and I would like it if they did Bianca versus Tiffany, but if they're going to do that, they need to speed that story up fast. Get to because it. Because they've had moments, but it hasn't been that fast. Oh, you know what? During that backstage segment when Naomi was like cleaning out her face and Bianca was helping her, we did have Tiffany Stratton come out and I forgot what the hell she said to the girls and, you know, basically pissing them off. Maybe they are speeding things up. Bianca, um, 15 days, Denise. That's 15 days is going to fly by. We got to start getting to like next week. We got to start booking matches that are happening on WrestleMania now. And I think Bianca versus Tiffany and the story it kind of represents is an easy one to get to if they're going to get to it. Yeah, it's simple. They can talk about their what happened with them at the Royal Rumble mm -hmm. and just kind of go from there. I love it. They should do it. And I hope they do. Yeah. All right, uh, we got Hunter Tillman here who sends in a very generous super chat. Thank you so much to Hunter who says, Hi, okay. Denise and Reg. I thought SmackDown was pretty solid tonight. They've gotten me a tad interested in the LA versus AJ match. I'm not like, OMG, I'm excited, but it's something LOL. <laughs> Women all over the show too. Jadis, SmackDown bound. Let's F and go. So since Hunter Tillman brings it up, let's go ahead and get into that. Um, Ice tee hee hee, I hope you're listening. Because I actually liked what they did here today with AJ Styles and LA Knight. So basically, they did this whole thing where AJ Styles is supposed to be getting interviewed by WWE's production team in his home. And during this, someone's honking, um, honking really loudly. AJ Styles goes out there. It's LA Knight. They start fighting. Then they get this police surveillance footage. And it's footage of them just like going down and throwing attacking each other and freaking AJ Styles' front lawn. And that's basically what we got. And this is why I liked this. I liked this because 
my criticism right now of LA Knight was that I feel like he's just not the stuff they've had him do has not made sense. Like he's attacking TVs for no, just because just because AJ Styles said he needed to humble him. I'm like, all right, that's not really a reason to attack a TV, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of lame. And then last week, I just preferred AJ Styles' promo a lot more. So yeah. I liked that they had LA Knight look a little bit cooler this week by confronting this man at his house. And they throw down in his front lawn. And the other reason why I like this is because God, finally, we, I, we need different scenery i've been saying this yes. all the time having different scenery and skits like this like this is the shit people remember man when mm -hmm. i think about my favorite wrestling memories i'm gonna think about when freaking booker t and stone cold steve austin mm -hmm. were freaking fighting in the freaking grocery store because it's visual and that stuff mm -hmm. you remember yeah, you need some, especially with like kind of the buildup of what the other matches are going into WrestleMania, Denise. You need something like this that's different, that's not in the arena, that's not backstage, that kind of represents something to look forward to on this show. These two wrestlers are interesting because I thought coming into this, coming into WrestleMania, that they would be a part of the U.S. title match with Logan Paul and and uh, Randy and Kevin Owens, but they went a different direction and they're going with the one-on-one, -on -one, which I'm excited about because I think both these guys have kind of earned a spot specifically on this card. And I hope that they get time to kind of execute. This was a fun little thing. LA Knight, like you said, Denise, he needs to look, he's been looking not as cool as he should and not as presented as he should. And I thought today as like a rebellious thing, he's getting arrested. All the things that kind of play along with it are good. They were like, AJ Styles is not pressing charges. Everything is all good. They're going to have the match. Really cool angle. And I'm excited for the match. My only criticism, I have one criticism. This should have gone longer. I wanted to see them yeah, like, short. I wanted to see someone's face get smashed into a mailbox, freaking somebody getting a plant and just being mm. like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. like throwing, I don't know. Come like on. Bra. Like, it's a bra. I want to see a bra. That's what mm -hmm. I'm going to remember, you know? So I wish they would have let that go a little bit longer because it would have reminded me of, you know, the fond, the fond days. <laughs> back in know. our days. <laughs> back in, back in our days, <laughs> wrestlers used to fight in the grocery store. <laughs> it's true. Thank you so much to Hunter Tillman for the generous super chat. We got crazy 101 here says, do my eyes deceive me, Reg? You are on a WWE show. Mind blown emoji. I don't know what I'm doing here, crazy 101. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Reg. This is his AI clone. It is. Yeah. Denise cloned me. She she not paying the real Reg. She's just got a replacement me. Cool, Denise. You know, there's a I've been noticing that YouTube has added this new thing now, actually. Um you know, when you upload a YouTube video, it asks you, like, is there explicit content? Are yeah. you promoting something? And you check yes, no, yes, no on little things. They've added a new one. And the new one is something about, like, does your video feature AI? Oh. Yeah. And I was like, nope. It's about to start getting weird here, Denise, in the next couple of years with AI and stuff. I don't like it. It's already gotten weird, man. Yeah, right, it's already man. weird. Yeah. All right. We got Jared here who says SmackDown Women's Division over the Raw. Raw fights back. Yeah, what are they doing over there on Raw, Denise? It seems like, was it last? They had a really good episode maybe two weeks ago, and I was like, oh, that was better than SmackDown, but then, like, things changed again. Raw needs... Uh, it's just long. It's just, I, I, I was trying to, like, justify it, but that's all it is. It's just long, man. SmackDown, two hours, and then they always end right before the... Like there's always three like three minutes left before the the eight before it's eight o'clock. Like they always finish around like seven fifty seven. Totally. What do you think uh, going into the Netflix deal? Do, are you with the idea of maybe them converting to two hours? I know they won't at all. They're probably going to start going longer on Netflix. Honestly, you, I, I think. think they're going to go longer. Right. Yeah, because Netflix is different. Netflix, you yeah. click, you watch your thing. And it's not like they're waiting for something else to come out next. Nah, you go back and you watch whatever the hell you want to watch. Right. Oh, so gonna... Netflix, I think, gives you an opportunity to do like a three hour and 30 minute raw or whatever. <sighs> Denise, don't say that. <laughs> but and but then again, though, you got it. But then here's the other thing, though. Three hours when we have commercials, you have so That's many commercials. That's the point. I, I, you know, I actually this just time, thought about that. Yeah. No commercials on Netflix. Mm hmm. So how do they change it? That, that means they could make it shorter, right? It should be two and a half hours in. Not yeah, longer. but I don't think they're going to do that. Totally it not. should they're be shorter. Gonna they're going to give us more video packages, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's going to be kind of like how Peacock runs, I think. 
Like Peacock, I have the Peacock version that like when I'm watching a pay per view, it sends me to commercial instead of showing me uh, video packages. Oh, see, I, uh, I, I get both. I get commercials and video packages. Mm. I'm not really sure what plan I'm on. Totally. Um, you know what I wish they would do, but they won't. You know mm. those Netflix shows, the ones where you get to choose the ending. <laughs> They should do that. No, seriously. Not you know maybe, which ones I'm talking about, I right? I do. Maybe not every Raw, Denise, but at like, least one. A, a special episode where they're like, yo, you guys get to determine or you guys get to help or get to participate. They but should it's hard add more though, because it's like live. That. Yeah. It would have to be a pre recorded thing. I mean, they could do like a special where they do like a fan chooses their ending. Taboo Tuesday. I don't know why <laughs> they haven't brought back Taboo Tuesday. It's been so like. <laughs> With how much technology and how everything's digital now, like how do you not have a show where fans pick the matches, fans pick the stipulations, fans vote on all that? It doesn't make sense. I used to vote on Taboo Tuesday all mm -hmm. the damn time, but I used to be so pissed though because um, I all my answers never got selected because I always picked the craziest shit. Like whatever See, was the, the craziest thing. option, that's what I always picked, and it was never the selection. Yes, because it was a psychology experiment. They give you three three options, and then they give you two that you don't want at all because they want you to pick the one. And they know Denise and other people are going to pick the one that nobody's going to go, but nobody, it's not going to be enough. I always picked, like, ladder matches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they, I went as extreme as possible. I don't understand why they don't do more branded things like that. Remember they used to do, like, the Vegas episode where they spin the big wheel? Like, what's Raw what's Roulette. Wrong? Yeah, Raw Roulette. Yeah, I don't know why oh, they don't I do that anymore. I missed the Raw Roulette. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Come on, Triple H. And I know, like, let's have more fun. Bring some. They're not theme. having fun anymore. Everybody's just like, we're so serious. Let's I know, no, let's have that's fun. Insane. Let's have fun. Damn, mm -hmm. I want the Raw Roulette back. Yeah, I don't even remember when was last. When's the last time we saw the Raw Roulette? I couldn't. Wasn't it when like Eric Bischoff was general manager? Because he, I feel like that was when we saw Raw Roulette a bunch. It feels like it's been like that, like fifteen years or something like that. Yeah, I can't even remember. Oh my God! All right, mm -hmm. Will Chisholm says I think we're getting Bianca, Naomi, and Jade versus Oscar, Kyrie, and Dakota at Mania to help Oscar yeah. with her being hurt. Oh, I forgot about Oscar's yeah, injury. Yeah, me too. Me Damn. too. Damn. Tyler Stevens sends in a super chat. Didn't write anything, but thank you so much to Tyler again. Ice T. He 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 says Tessa Blanchard is needed in the WWE. I watch her killing it and see him out loud and speaking good Spanish. Hasn't she served the penance for whatever already? Uh, I don't think that I can't say like someone is specifically needed in WWE specifically with the women's division because they're loaded. They're stacked and loaded with women there. And they've got so many more coming down uh, or coming up rather on the NXT side of things. No comment. No comment. All right. Ice T he 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 says, I can't believe these tiny women versus Jade Bianca. Uh hold on, hold on. Zaya. No. Rhea. Raya? Wait, what's what's hold on? I'm blanking. What's he trying to spell? What are you talking about? I don't know what I'm thinking. All right. Anyway. I think Rhea, Rhea Ripley. He probably just, you know, forgot the, you know. No, but Rhea wouldn't be in this. No, I think he's just saying in general. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Let me read that again. I can't believe these tiny women versus Jade, Bianca, Rhea, and the other big athletic women coming up like Strat and Jade and Rodriguez get Tessa. All right, we got Will Chisholm. Sorry, I messed up your super chat, man. Will Chisholm okay. says in Samoa Joe voice, we saw Wendy come out to help AJ. Oh, yeah. Wendy did come to help AJ. That's hilarious. <laughs> Wendy, remember when Samoa Joe went to AJ Styles' house and he was like, Wendy, you don't I remember, remember that? that? Yeah, he broke into AJ Styles' house and he was like, Wendy, and he was like terrorizing and haunting that. It was a good, good time. I do not remember that. Holy shit. Don't remember. Lock, locked it out. Nope. Don't remember. Roberto Arson also says, Hope Asuka, who's better than Goldberg, is healthy. <laughs> I, I saw that, the, the quote going around. What is Gold? Why do. Sometimes when these interviews come out, how come de no controversy uh, uh, quotes come out of your interviews, Denise? You don't be asking those questions? What do you, I was going to say, I have I had some controversial quotes on my interviews? There's never like, this guy said this on Denise's thing. He said that wrestling is stupid. Like, no, it's I remember there was one uh, on one of my interviews where, and I'm not going to get into the details of it, but yeah. one uh, wrestler made a comment and a fan tried to twist this person's comments. Uh, and right away, I went out there and I was like, nope, that is not. not what she said. And I explained that. And that was 
solved, problem solved. But there hasn't been any controversial. I uh, only the interviews where I feel like there was more, like people that maybe were released when they talk about like oh, what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not really controversial. Well, it's, it's more so really. like oh that should happen there. But yeah. no, not those kinds of uh, quotes have came out of my interviews. Yeah, good. Keep it that way. I'm like I'm I'm uh I'm what do you got to do? Uh, sports, no, family friendly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm PG 13. Totally, totally. G rated. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Reg. Thank you. <laughs> Roberto, I said, no, thank you so much for the super chat. All right, let's keep it going because we got other things to talk about here. Um, all right, so we got to get into, let's talk about the Broad Breaker video package. Oh. This is kind of quick. Yo, yeah. this was money, man. Yeah, this was pretty hot, Denise. I was like, I don't know if they've done a lot of these before, but yeah, they had a Braun Breaker video, kind of like a sports science going over his stats and how fast he is and how how high he could jump. But I thought it was awesome. He just looked like, like if I didn't know anything about Braun Breaker and I saw that video, I'd be like, yo, who's this guy? Like, put him on TV. I want to see him spear somebody. Really dope video. I love them kind of just taking chances and doing different stuff like that. That makes the show feel way better. I agree, man. I'm looking at this and I'm going, wow, this guy's a beast. Almost like yeah. if I've never seen him before, you know? Right. Seriously. That's how I'm like, <laughs> damn, he is cool. I've never seen this before. I'm like, no, I've definitely seen him before. <laughs> Crazy one and one says Goldberg is an L. Tessa is an L too, respectfully. Thank you for a super chat, Crazy 101. All right, we got to get into these tag team qualified matches. So we've been having God, this whole I was just talking about this on I don't even remember what show. Mm-hmm. But on one of these shows, I was talking about how WWE, the main roster is doing their qualifying matches on both Raw and SmackDown for the six pack. NXT is doing qualifier matches and for their tag team thing. Then over on the AEW side, we got the tournament. Reg, I'm fudged up in the head. All of these teams there's and the rules, they're also different. It's really messing with my head. Um, but over on the SmackDown side for the six-pack challenge, they were doing this whole bracket thing. And whoever wins the bracket, the bracket one, and whoever wins bracket two will face each other. And then whoever wins that goes and gets added to this match at WrestleMania. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We had the Good Brothers versus Austin Theory and Grayson Waller and the Street Profits versus AOP. Um, We saw the Street Profits advance as well as Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. So now they will both be facing each other in their bracket two match. And then the bracket one team, we'll we'll talk about them in a second. But um, what did you think about both of these matches? I thought these matches were really good, but kind of two different kind of tag style matches. Um, uh, the Street Profits and uh, AOP match. I thought that AOP has looked uh, pretty good coming back. Their faction I have legit negative interest in, but I thought that them as a tag team looked really good. They were strong. They held their moments out. But Street Profits still, even though it's uh, uh, it's not as hot as it once was, they still have that little bit of energy that brings fans together. And when they get on their hot streak, they're the tag team like no other. I really uh, would look forward to them kind of being in the match. But like I said earlier, I'm a really big fan of Grayson Waller specifically. Austin Theory is still on the fence was. But I like Grayson Waller a lot, and I think anything he's kind of attached in is dope. This is a good kind of spot for Theory, too. I think they have the potential to win this whole thing because I can think what they represent them as tag team champions could be pretty fun going, you know, post WrestleMania and everything. Really fun matches on both sides. Good to see the Good Brothers. I liked Mia Yim's or what's her name? Meechin's. Meechin. Uh, arm drag in the Tim uh, High Heels. That was really dope. So, man, it's yeah. not looking good for the Good Brothers, though. They got demoted uh, to NXT. Yeah. They got defeated by Theory and Waller. That's what I was thinking. And when I was watching that match, I was like, whoa, the Good Brothers have fell from grace. But, I mean, that's kind of what they wanted, I think. Like, they were like, yeah, we're just going to make money. I guess. I thought, I, thought, I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I, I don't know. Um, we try to think. They're about to have some homies. They're about to have some homies join them. You know, Tama Tonga. Me, yeah, possibly. All right, let's talk about what's happening with these uh, brackets. So here we go. I need to show the graphic, or else I'll just get so confused. But we got the tag team championship qualifying matches taking place next week. The Street Profits versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Whoever wins that match is added to WrestleMania. 
Then we have the new Catch Republic versus the Galo del Fantasma. Whoever wins that match is also being added to the WrestleMania Six Pack Challenge. Um, predictions here on who you think is going to make it, Reg. I think it's going to be New Catch Republic and the Street Profits. E- you think the Street Profits over Waller and Theory? I don't think. I think Waller and Theory are going to go over, and I take New Catch Republic on the other side. You I like the Street why? Profits, but I don't know if they're going to be. In it's there. a ladder match. Right? The six pack challenge? I'm pretty yeah. sure it's a ladder yeah, match. Yeah, no, the, the WrestleMania match is definitely a ladder match. Yeah. That's why I think that Theory and uh, Waller are going to win. I don't know why. No, that's why I think the Profits are going to win so that we can see Montez Ford do some crazy stuff. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess you're right. I could see that. And I, they're going to have New Catch Republic win because they don't do anything with the, with, they don't really push like any of the other guys. They, they don't really push like, the LWO or any of them, which is but really I mean, if you life. need a good, you need a good kind of, you need some ladder guys that are gonna do some kind of spectacular. Maybe those two guys, you know, the oh, they would be people. crazy. Yeah, they would be. F- actually, I actually think that. Um, I think they're out already, though. It was Legado. I actually think Legado. Um, would be a little bit. Sh- no, sorry. What are they? LWO hey, would there. be a little bit stronger. Oh, with Joaquin Wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, Joaquin yeah, 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 has been doing right. all of that crazy shit. So I actually think that they probably would have been a little bit stronger on that end. So yeah. yeah. That's who I'm thinking of, actually. I get them too mixed up. Sorry, you guys. Well, it's because they were the day because them, LWO yeah, yeah. was legado. Right. And so they've swapped. It's been a whole thing. It's been yeah. a whole thing. If you stopped watching in the last year, <laughs> I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. This is from Tyler Steven here who says, do you guys um, do you guys think Ellie Knight is missing something in his presentation? The bra was cool, but he needs more depth than that. Just and not not just a catchphrase to me. I'm not the biggest. I, I don't think I'm the biggest fan, so I'm probably not the right person to ask. I, and I think for me, it's always because I've never been completely sold yet. Yes, Tyler. I think Denise and I are both agreeing with you here. There is LA Knight is over, like Rover, one of the most over guys in the company. But there still is that, like, we see the rock and you're like, oh, LA Knight, that's what you're trying to do. You know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. They, and that's, that's what it feels that like. Comparison's in always going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, but it's like, when you see it, you're like, oh, yeah, I see. That's how you really do it. And it's like, uh, but LA Knight, I still think he's a great talker. He, he can sell a lot he could tell great stories i think he has all the things but i do agree with tyler i think i, I don't even think tyler's saying this but um there's something missing that really the reason that i think I it never, needs to feel authentic to him exactly the reason that i never believed he was going to be world champion because there was something missing and it was that i think it's that inauthenticity and it's not his fault i don't think like he's like purposely doing like a rock uh stone cold hybrid uh tribute act but that's what it comes off of yeah unfortunately so i mean you know it's it's for some people and it's not for others and and it's clearly for a lot of people because he is over it's over very over we got ice t he 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 who says you guys are acting like everybody in damage control isn't tiny little woman now that bailey is gone and i guess forgiveness isn't the wrestling marks makeup or in righteous reg punish tessa forever <laughs> i mean we're not saying that at all and i just want to say one thing by the way what is this whole thing with tiny women? Because tiny women, just because they're tiny, does not mean that they can't go out there and compete like a mother effer. Because goddamn, they can. That's a big fact. Nothing. Uh, tiny women are some of the best wrestlers in the world. Amen. Amen. I mean, look at Sasha Banks. She's tiny. Best ever. Best of all time. She's tiny. But you know what? If your spirit is strong, you can do it. Anyways, all right, uh, let me go ahead and move on from here. Actually, I think we got everything, Reg. Yeah, I think we're moving on. That's it. We've all the way moved on. Yeah, we definitely have. All right, uh, last but not least, before we go, um, let's see what I got coming up next week. It is a new slate, so I will be back for the Monday Night Raw Watch Along. Tuesday, I will be here for NXT. Wednesday, AEW Dynamite. Friday, SmackDown with Righteous Reg, and of course, Wednesday with Righteous Reg 2. Uh, Collision with Righteous Reg 2. Three in a row. <laughs> I know. And then I'm pretty sure that's it for next week. And then after that, we're getting into Mania season. I'm very excited. Uh, there's going to be some good stuff coming up here on the channel. Got some great stuff happening, so I can't wait. Um, Crazy 101 says, Tiny Latinas will kill you. Trust. Amen. Amen. 
some of the craziest women of all time that I've seen, tiny Latina. I'm talking about like, yo, that woman, somebody handcuffed her. Yeah, for sure. No comment. <laughs> Ebony Princess, you were talking about tag teams on NXT. Hi, both of you. Thank you so much, Ebony. What's I appreciate up, you Ebony? coming on here. Um, what was I talking about tag teams on NXT? Mm. I don't remember what I was talking about with tag teams on NXT. Maybe the Good Brothers or something. Yeah, yeah, they're they're doing their. Oh, yeah, they're going to be tag team champs, I think, on NXT. Oh, yeah, because they're getting the title match at the WrestleMania weekend show. Yeah, I think they're winning that. So yeah. that's my guess there. Yeah. Um, all right. So we next week's matches BTW that were announced for SmackDown. We actually got a lot that's been announced for next week. Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai. The oh. tag team championship matches that I just went over. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton teaming up together to take on Pretty Deadly. Jade Cargill's first appearance on SmackDown as a SmackDown superstar. Um, so there you go. That is next week's show. Um, for SmackDown. Before we go, Reg, what do you got going on? Uh, catch me tomorrow morning, Philip Lindsay, Righteous Reg, Graph City Podcast. We got a lot to talk about, as always. Uh, every Wednesday, I'm here with Denise. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be here on the SmackDown show. I'll be on Collision next week. Every Wednesday, I'm on with Mike and Indeed. Thursdays, I'm on the Ring of Honor Post show. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, check out my new album, uh, International Boulevard, RighteousReg.Bandcamp.com. Denise, I appreciate you. You're the coolest. All of your supporters that always show up. Really dope. It's a Friday night and people could be outside, but y'all are here watching us. Thank you. I know. It's a Friday. That's true. What are we doing inside? Let's go outside and party <laughs> while we still can. God damn it. Let's You're go not party. going outside, you little liar. Denise is lying to all of you. She oh. does not go and party. She's going to go and do work right now. Remember, Will had to drag my ass to Wally Mania. You want to know how he you. got me to Wally Mania? Hmm. He said, and I quote, Denise, there's people there that don't expect you to show up. And I said, well, then I'm going to show up. And then Denise showed up and she hot. She hid the whole time. Like she was in a corner at one point, a dark, like she was like not trying to. She did show up, but she wasn't trying to at all. What can I say, Reg? I'm I'm not that social. That's true. That's I true. need someone to, like, you know what, Reg? Can I hire you to be yes. the person who introduces me to people? You, what do you mean? You're Denise. Every time we go somewhere, everybody's like, Denise, Denise, let me take a picture. Let me take a picture. They all know what you are. You need to introduce yeah, me. I know, but I'm still shy though. I need shy. someone to like, I need to hire someone to break the ice for me. She said, I'm shy. <laughs> no one believes that. Nobody um, I felt like there was something else I needed to say and I don't remember. Oh yeah. No, I'm not going to party tonight. After this, I'm going to go back on my couch and finish watching Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Good times. All right. Thank you to everybody tuning in. I appreciate you guys as always. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Please do not forget, leave a review on Apple Pods or Spotify really helps us out a whole lot. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend.